Hello, and welcome to part B of the module on community engagement for inclusive urban sanitation. In this module, we'll identify tools to use, highlight some considerations when engaging the community, and look at two case studies of community engagement in urban sanitation. Getting participation in urban areas is different than in rural areas. Despite good intentions, there can be obstacles to getting the community interested. For example, a community may lack social cohesion and have a history of conflict and lack of cooperation. It may be difficult to get the attention of community leaders. There can be a lack of trust in local government officials or in the water utility. Some communities have had bad experiences in the past. A common complaint is that communities are frequently consulted, but they do not see any changes in their circumstances, making them less willing to spend time on consultations and surveys. People and their situations vary enormously. For example, they may be busy at work and have little time to participate, or they may spend many hours commuting to and from work. They may rent their house or room and have no control over water and sanitation services. It could be the landlord's decision to upgrade sanitation, and the landlord may not care or even live nearby. And sanitation could be a low priority compared to items such as water, food, health, and education. To overcome these challenges, use multiple engagement methods. Use different methods at different times with different segments of the community. And give it time. Community engagement takes time to be effective. It takes time for the community and time for the consultants. This needs to be factored into project planning. To engage with you, people often sacrifice free time on evenings or weekends. They may need to forego income by taking time off from formal or informal employment. Engagement adds to household duties and has childcare implications. Involve the community, but be aware of the cost to them. Practical strategies can include choosing the best times to interact with the community, not demanding too much time or boring them with long technical talks, or by adding on to existing community meetings and always treating the community with respect by being well prepared and on time. Project proposals must allow time for technical and social or community development specialists to engage with communities and include this time in the project budget. Engaging all the community is critical for inclusive sanitation because sanitation affects everyone. For example, Make sure that women are involved and are allowed to speak up and that people with disabilities and other vulnerable groups are included in the dialogue. Practical strategies to ensure that all groups are included in community engagement include consulting separately with women, people with disabilities, young or elderly people, migrants or ethnic minorities, Using female facilitators may help women speak out more freely. Holding meetings at times that suit the workload of women and providing childcare. Making meeting places physically accessible so people with disabilities can attend. Or visiting people with disabilities in their homes to hear their views. Working through NGOs or other networks to reach the poorest people. Lastly, your words and actions will create a reaction in the community. This could be positive or negative. So you need to prepare carefully and critically and be aware of the types of reaction different people may have to what is said and done. Some strategies include accept that the community is an important stakeholder and will contribute to success or failure. Overcome personal feelings of discomfort. Don't be dismayed by community opposition or negativity. Good preparation and being calm, open, and honest will build trust and strengthen community engagement. 
find good social, local social advisors or community development facilitators to work with. Help link the community to matters they may not be aware of, such as planning processes, local government regulations, or the private sector. This will mean you are adding value by helping the community to see the bigger picture. As we have seen, there are different times and ways to engage with communities. Now I'll present two case studies to illustrate how different types of community engagement can be used in different project phases. The Iringa Municipality Project in Tanzania aimed to improve health and living conditions in five low-density peri-urban wards. Although most households had latrines, 45% were unimproved traditional pit latrines, and only a few households used mechanical desludging services. Community engagement occurred at all phases of the work. During pre-concept and advocacy, an initial meeting was held to identify sanitation problems. Scoping and data collection included a transect walk, community mapping, defining project boundaries, and forming a community task force to represent community interests. During the concept phase, latrine options were developed and the community selected their preferences through voting. In the design phase, sanitation action plans were prepared. During implementation, the task force coordinated all the hygiene and sanitation activities in the community and mobilized the community to improve sanitation. Monitoring involved the community task force reporting back on progress. The final outcome was that implementers and the community came up with sanitation solutions that were feasible and suitable, and the sense of community ownership increased. The Indonesia Urban Water Sanitation and Hygiene Project was implemented in formal and informal areas of 54 cities. The sanitation focus was on improving fecal sludge management, increasing connections of existing septic tanks to sewers, or building septic tanks rather than draining the waste directly into rivers, canals and drains. Customer engagement occurred at key phases with a strong focus on increasing their understanding of sanitation and educating them on the appropriate use of facilities. During pre-concept and advocacy, community engagement visits and the mass media were used. Transect walks were undertaken using mobiles to take photos of poor fecal sludge management practices, then showing and discussing the photos in community meetings to highlight the problem and trigger action. In the design phase, models and displays were used to explain sanitation services to the community. During implementation, customer training and education on proper system use was provided. For example, what could and could not be put into the systems. And finally, monitoring included community management of public facilities, citizen feedback, and complaint hotlines. The result was increased access to improved sanitation facilities for 256,000 people. Some community engagement methods and tools have already been mentioned here. This table lists the most common methods used in community engagement, but there are others. Note that methods should be matched appropriately to the phases of the project. The methods and tools that you choose will depend on the project phase, the level of engagement you want, and your objectives for engaging the community. Sanitation approaches, such as EAVAG's community-led urban environmental sanitation, or CLUES, and urban community-led total sanitation, or UCLTS, all have useful tips on community engagement methods and tools. In this module, we've learned about the key aspects and obstacles of community engagement. We've shown that there are many methods and tools to use. You need to choose the most appropriate ones for each project phase. The role of engineers and technicians is important, but this information needs to be conveyed in simple ways to non-technical people. Consultants must prepare well for community engagement, 
seek professional guidance from social specialists and community development facilitators. Thanks for listening.